Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. And he did not want anyone to know, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days he will rise. But they did not understand the saying, and were afraid to ask him. And they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you discussing on the way? But they kept silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. And he sat down and called the twelve, and he said to them, If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. And he took a child and put him in the midst of them. And taking him in his arms, he said to them, Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Uh, my friends say I'm humble because I never show off. Well, that's because I'm not good at any things. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, got an award for being humble. I obviously didn't accept it. Uh, we jump into humility and how challenging that is uh, in our in our reading in James today. And, and also the epistle reading, obviously, with the disciples, because the opposite of humility is pride, right? And pride takes us down a path that usually is not a good one, and, and we all struggle with that. Uh, we're going to get into that today a little bit, and then as Christians, we struggle it along with everyone else. Now, jumping in here, I'm going to just uh, jump in here in James chapter 3, verse 14. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly and spiritual and demonic. Pretty strong. You know, when it talks about bitter jealousy, selfish ambition, in other words, those are kind of the, the characteristics of, of, of where pride leads us. And it leads us in a path that I want it my way. That's what it comes down to. And, and I think it plays out, and we see it today uh, embedded in the word entitled, right? I mean, we accuse the younger generation right now of being entitled, thinking they're entitled. And, and a lot of them are. And they've been brought up that way. And who brought them up that way? We did. Because we provided them everything. And, and why did we do that? Because I was provided everything. Now, my parents were not entitled by any means. They had to work their tails off. Everything they had, nothing was given to them. Go back a couple generations, and that's how it was. But we, we've generated this world now that, that it is about me, what I can achieve for me. It is about power. It is about how many likes I can get on TikTok. And, and we now live in a world that, that is, oh, it's always been this way, driven about me. And he, even as Christians struggle with this. I mean, who's James writing to? He's writing to the church. And, and we struggle with this because of an old sinful nature within us. 
and we've talked about that last last couple of weeks again that that dual nature within inside of us there was a, a book and later a movie about it it was called dr jekyll and mr hyde right everybody here is old enough to remember that and and that two personas, and every once in a while, it was Mr. Hyde that would get out. And we have that problem, too, is, is God's people. And that's why we're called being double-minded. He uses that terminology there. Double-minded because we, we have a, a spiritual persona and identity that is part of who we are. As Christians, as God's people. As, as born into us through the work of the gospel, through baptism, we have this identity of God's children. We have this nature within us that is uh, down the list here. Uh, pure, peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, fruits of good works. We have those. Those are part of us. Also, too, we struggle with the other part of the nature. And unfortunately, that leads us to, to do things and say things that sometimes we shouldn't do and so on. And, and fortunately, most of us are not to the extreme of murder. And that's where it ultimately leads here. You desire and do not have, so you murder. I know no one here has done that. But are there any of us that are not guilty of one time or another thinking bad things about someone else? Or being jealous about someone else? Or being jealous of what they have? Or wish that, you know, gosh, they got it awful good. Why don't they have to deal with this? Things that I have to deal with? See, we, we have struggles and things that God places in our lives and those are blessings, though. Because God wonderfully has a way of humbling us. The guy I was thinking about in the Old Testament, an Old Testament guy, Moses. Okay? Moses started out pretty good. Moses was entitled. Now, actually, he didn't start out that way. He started out as a Hebrew baby, and his life was in danger. We know that story. Placed him in the, in the, in the, in the reeds in the water in a basket. Gets scooped up and taken into the house of Pharaoh and raised as an Egyptian royalty. Okay? That's entitled. So entitled, later on, when he found out his birthright and found out he was actually Hebrew and connected to those slaves out there that were working for him, and saw a guy that was beating one of his fellow brothers. He went, he went after that guy and ended up killing him. And, and that wasn't God's plan. And sometimes we as God's people will take steps, usually not that drastic, but we will take steps to maneuver things or say things or operate in a way to get our way. And it's not the wisdom from above, it is wisdom. It is actually labeled as demonic. You know, the disciples also, same issue. And they're feeling pretty entitled. They have been hanging out with Jesus, and, and they have been part of the, um, the, the throng of all the wonderful things going on. Feeding the masses out of nothing, watching Jesus heal people. Being part of that is... Jesus sends them out to heal people and do miracles. And, and, and they're feeling pretty all of themselves. And, and even at one point, you know, Jesus tells them several times, I'm going to be killed. I'm going to die and come back to life. They always miss the back to life part. They can't figure that out. And at one point, Peter says, you know, We'll never let that happen. What if we all know is told? Peter, right? Get behind me who? Is Satan? Is that demonic? That's demonic. 
Are we ever guilty of stepping in those shoes? Absolutely. Because we have that simple nature in ourselves that we struggle with. God wonderfully works to bring us around. And, and humility is the path here. Humility is the path. That's what he did with Moses, right? Moses had a little bit of a, first of all, he got in trouble for killing that guy. That wasn't God's plan. It wasn't his way. Pharaoh found out about it and wanted to take his life. He ran for the hills. Actually, he ran for the hills of Bidia. Out in the wilderness, the other side of forever. Spent 40 years there. All that life from behind had left him. And what did God do? He humbled him. That was a 40-year exercise in humility. That was a long time. And then God says, it's time to go to work, Moses. And of course, when he calls Moses onto the carpet, which is there by the burning bush, and then Moses says, oh, I'm sorry, we got the wrong guy. I can't do this. That was a sign he was ready. God had put him in a position now where he was ready to use him. God does that to us. He did that to the disciples. But the path to that is through the cross. We are not capable of getting ourselves there. Even the path through humility is one that God has to walk us through. It is a path. I mean, look here. Uh, it's a uh, First of all, I'll back up really well towards it in chapter 4, about uh, verse 5. Or do you suppose it is no pur to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? First of all, we're God's children because he's made his spirit to dwell in us. He has had to do the heavy lifting to, to make a change within us. And he understands that struggle within us and he yearns over us. Meaning he has a heart for us and our walk with him. But he gives more grace. See, that's what it requires. It's God's grace to be on his path. Because we need it. There is nothing we are capable of to please God outside of faith and his grace. So, Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, gives grace to the humble. Wonderfully, he humbles us. One, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. How do we submit ourselves? We do it every Sunday. When we walk in the door here, we confess our sins. We're saying, Lord, I messed up again. I can't do it. I need you. You're the one. That's submitting. That's humbling ourselves. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I've always had a hard time with that path. We are called to engage in this work with God. First of all, we can't do it without him. But we are called to engage. You know, Luther had a, a, a deal. He said, you know, you can't keep the birds from flying overhead, but you can keep them from making a nest. Basically, in other words, we can't keep the temptations from coming our way. They're going to come our way. But we can do things to help battle those temptations to not be there, to not put ourselves in that situation, and, and try to, to move in another direction. That's part of the resistance. There we need God's help with that. To resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That's what I put on the sign this last week. A reminder out there. We draw near to God. He is coming to us. And you think about the, the, the story of the prodigal son, right? And, and the beauty of that story is the father. And the greatest part of that star of the story is the sun is returning, right? But what's the the sun is coming up the road, and what's the father doing? He is running towards his son. Dads don't 
Okay? If I'm running, it's looking pretty darn funny. Okay? And if it's a little, if it might get CD run, they're probably embarrassed. Yes. But his father did not care what he looked like. He was running from love versus that's what the father does to us. He is, we draw near to him, he runs to us. He draws towards us. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Again, that he realizes who we are. We struggle with that old nature and, 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 and who we're supposed to be. And, and cleanse your hands, you sinners. We realize who we are. Sinful people that deserve God's judgment. That's who we all are. He is the one who cleanses us. Be wretched, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will exalt you. In other words, that's one of the beautiful things that the Holy Spirit does. He actually works both sides of the street. He, he actually works the law side. He actually works in our hearts to convict us of sin. That's what the law does. And who's wonderfully working there? The Holy Spirit. He is the one helping us feel bad. It's also working on the other side through the power of the gospel to bring us healing of the heart. And he connects us to the one who is the most humble. Now it says in the Bible, uh, the most humble man was, guess what? Moses. Moses was the most humble man on the earth, as per the Bible. Now we know who is a step uh, lower than that, and that would be our Savior Jesus. Who yet uh, was God and, and did not think it anything to be God, Philippians 2, but yet humbled himself to the point of the cross. The one who created the world, put himself into human flesh, submitted himself to us, and allowed us to be him and humilify him and crucify him. And that whole process was humility. And he submitted himself in that way. His power was submitted. He cared for us. To do what we can never do. To be able to be perfectly righteous, humble, always serving, always about the will of the Father, and then humbly taking our punishment for us. Taking what we deserve. But just like he told the disciples was going to happen, because it was God's plan, he was going to be victorious over sin and death in the grave, and he was going to come back to life, and he did come back to life. And through his life, we have life. Through his life, we have those gifts and the work of the Holy Spirit that helps us to be who we're called to be. Yes, we struggle with it, and we constantly are in need of God's forgiveness and mercy. And God helps us be all of these wonderful things. I found this list on the internet. You know it has to be true. Uh, it was Mother Teresa's humility list. I actually found it on a Catholic website. I don't know that it was her list, but I like the list, so I'm going to share it with you. These were some things that... that Ways to kind of go about living in humility, okay? And, and what we know about her, she was humble, okay? Uh, speak as little as possible about yourself, okay? Keep busy with your own affairs and not those of others. How do we get in trouble? How do we get worried about it? Okay. Avoid curiosity. I have to think about that one. Most of us are, and, and we're curious about what other people are doing and how they're doing it, why they're doing it. And you see where you get in trouble? Try not to be too curious. Do not interfere in the affairs of others. Uh, accept small irritations with good humor. That takes some ability, does it? And, and of course. That doesn't apply to bigger 
limitations, right? Let's say uh, what's funny is one person's small irritation is another one's large, and those are usually called husband and wife. Right? Uh, do not dwell on the faults of others, except censures, even if unmerited. Give in to the will of others. Ooh, that's a hard one. And, and you've heard me say many times that that's one of the great challenges within the, the, the Christian faith. Because if I'm coming to the table with God's will and you're coming to the table with God's will, we don't want to give in, do we? But it's hard deciphering what is ultimately God's will. Uh, let's see. Uh, accept insults and injuries. Accept contempt. Being forgotten and disregarded. Ooh, that's a hard one, isn't it? Someone forgets your birthday. Mom, sorry. Your kids are terrible at calling, especially your sons. That's how it works. And it doesn't mean that they don't love you, but they're boys. Sorry. They, and, but we, we take things so personal, you know. And, and we need to not do that in our lives, especially in the brotherhood of faith. Uh, let's see. Uh, where am I? Uh, oh, okay. Be courteous and delicate, even when provoked by someone. That's a hard one to do. That takes some humility. Uh, do not seek to be admired and loved. Do not protect yourself behind your own dignity. I was uh, reading a deal on C.S. Lewis. He had a big thing he wrote about that. And he said, we are so worried, and this, of course, he's David back a bunch of years. But he said, we're so worried about how other people perceive us that, that we won't allow ourselves to laugh at ourselves. We won't all, we're so about our dignity and, and that we won't be ourselves. We won't relax. We won't let other people see who we are. Uh, in the end, in discussions, even when you are right, oh, that's not possible. <laughs> yes. Uh, let's see. Uh, and choose always the more difficult path. See, all of those things fall into this, this whole uh, uh, list of peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial, sincere. But all of that comes only through who? Through Jesus. And what do we need every day? God's forgiveness, because we have a hard time with those things. I see you as, as God's people living this out. I do witness this, these, these positive fruits of the Spirit, do witness that within this, this body of believers. And who do we give thanks for? To, uh, for us to even do some of that? To our Savior Jesus. He is the one that makes that happen. He's also the one that makes it possible every time for us, every day, for us to kneel our, put our knees across and say, hey, I need your help. I messed up. I need you to lift me up so to walk and be with you and call me to We are blessed to have a God that runs down the road to us. And, and as we do draw near to Him, He continues in a wonderful way to draw even closer to us. And may the Lord continue to bless you in your walk with Him. In this, this challenge to be humble, to set our pride aside, but we give thanks to God who helps us in all of us.